Congratulations on finishing your course. That was some hard work. Now what do I do with it? Is there anyone that will house my course and help me sell it? What if I can get an entire team to help me sell my course that I worked so hard on? Have I got a discovery for you? The Great Discovery not only has a place for your course, but a network of affiliates that are eager to sell your hard-earned course creation. Want to make a little more money so you can build your course or invest in yourself? Opportunities for all this and more await you at The Great Discovery. Or go to tuepodcast.net backslash discovery for more information. Once again, that's tuepodcast.net backslash discovery for more information about how to join The Great Discovery now. This is an Undiscovered Legacy production. Undiscovered Entrepreneur, episode number 75. Innovation Sparks, 75 Dreams Align, Wealth in Ideas. Love haikus. And so we ended up having a falling out. And she ended up telling me in that moment that I would never make it on my own because she knew the the pain points that I had in my life. And so she tried to bring me back to that so that I would stay with her. And she said, you're never going to make it on your own. And she thought that I would just, I would just stay in that situation. But she underestimated how much I had changed. And I said, no, that's fine. I'm ready to go my own way. Welcome to the Undiscovered Entrepreneur, the podcast where brand new entrepreneurs come to life and could quite possibly be discovered. Join me, DJ Scoob, and the rest of the Scoob Believers as we help these new businesses become a reality. And now, away we go. Hello, Scoob Believers, and welcome to episode number 75 of The Undiscovered Entrepreneur, and it's me, DJ Scoob, (laughs) coming at you with whatever device you have to be listening on. Okay, so today we're talking to an experienced entrepreneur. Her name is Navi. Now, Navi is a coach for not just teaching how to love yourself, but to navigate through difficult relationships, even some that can be abusive in one way, shape, or form. It's kind of a little bit of our personal subject for me, too, just because my family went through a lot of abuse when I was growing up and that kind of thing. So this really kind of hit hard for me. But at the same time, I love the great information that you have for all of us. So this is really something you should really listen to. So let's listen to Navi. Salutations, school believers, and we are here again with another amazing entrepreneur. Today, we are actually interviewing an experienced entrepreneur. So let's say hi to Navi. Hi, Navi. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for coming on to the Undiscovered Entrepreneur. I really, really appreciate you. All right. So I have one kind of semi-serious question to ask you. Okay, you ready? Yes. (laughs) All right. Are you a school believer? Yeah, where's that mystery machine? <laughs> <laughs> oh, she caught it. Thank you. <laughs> it's, in, it's parked in the back there, so we'll get to it later. All right. <laughs> All right, Navi, if you could just do for me a quick favor here and just describe for me who you are, what you do, and you kind of give me a backstory about how you actually got started in your entrepreneur adventure. Yeah, Absolutely. So I'm a love and confidence coach, an inspirational speaker, and an author. And what I do is I help people to fall head over heels in love with themselves so that they can effortlessly attract the love and life of their dreams because attraction is the same, whether it applies to your romantic life, your relationships, or your business. And once you tap into your confidence, you are able to magnetize everything to you effortlessly. And as an inspirational speaker, I do speak about confidence, but I also speak about my my personal struggles. So I grew up in a home where I 
was, I had a mother who was physically and emotionally abusive towards me. So I never had confidence. I never had self-esteem. It wasn't something that I had at one point and then I lost it. It was just never there. And that led me on a path to get into domestic violence relationships as an adult. And after I left my second one in a row, I just realized, okay, this can never, ever happen to me again, because I got out by the skin of my teeth and I just knew that something had to change. And I knew that what had happened wasn't my fault, but I was deciding what I was allowing into my life. And so I had to be the change that I, that I wanted to experience in my life. So that sent me on a healing journey and that included therapy, included private coaching, included group coaching. And a couple of things happened. One, when I was in group coaching, I realized that I have this ability to see things in other people's lives and pinpoint problems because people would want my input. And that was a gift that I had, which encouraged me to go and get certified as a coach myself. And then once I also realized, once I healed myself and I realized that I could go from not having any self-esteem, not having any confidence to just actually feeling good in my own skin every day. And then the result of that is being able to magnetize all of the things that I want into my life. I became passionate about helping other people to do the same thing, because I think it's something that so many people struggle with, whether you're like me, and this has been an issue right from the get-go, or perhaps you had confidence at some point, and then you had some sort of life-altering moment where you ended up losing it. And and when you don't have that confidence, you're not able to show up with all of your authenticness, with all of your boldness, with all of your audacity. And when you can't show up that way, life can't meet you. You can't meet the right people that are going to open those doors for you. And it just makes life such a struggle. And it just, I'm so passionate about helping people to be able to feel good and to realize that it doesn't have to be hard. (laughs) Yeah, that's perfectly true. Yeah, that's amazing. You went through a whole lot to get to where you are now, but it's actually put you in a great place right here in the very middle end. It's not exactly the end, but you know, in your journey, (laughs) in your entrepreneur adventure, but it's amazing. I like, I like the fact you said head over heels in love with yourself. That's a, that's great. I love that. I have one similar to that to get across the start line. But I love yours because it really makes a quick, really good point that you have to love yourself before you could do anything else, before you can have other people love you properly, before you could go out and have that confidence. You got to be okay with yourself. You have to be in love with yourself to be able to do these things. Yeah. And I mean, I know your podcast, you're speaking to a lot of um, early, early entrepreneurs, beginning entrepreneurs. And the thing is, um, when, when you don't love yourself, when you don't have that confidence, it's always one going outside of yourself for the answers. And and that's different than having, than having a mentor that's, that's going to guide you on your path, but it's also, it, it becomes looking for an excuse as to why you can't start now. Maybe you need that next course. You need this, you need that. Right. But it's, it, it's holding yourself back. And I'm just a firm believer that you learn by doing and done is better than perfect, right? And I didn't get to where I am now without doing. And if you listen to, I I also have a podcast. If you listen to my first episode, if I listen to my first episode, it makes me cringe because of how far I've come as a speaker. But if I didn't start there, I wouldn't be where I am now. If I didn't start there, I wouldn't be on stages of over a thousand people being able to speak with confidence and ease. So you just, you just have to start. And I always say that my superpower is that I'm not afraid to suck at things. Oh yeah. There was a uh, podcaster, John Lee Dumas, who said you have to be a disaster before you're a master. So (laughs) don't be afraid. Your first few things of whatever you're going to do, it's going to be terrible. (laughs) And that's just how it is. That's how it's going to work. But you have to remember that that's just part of the process. We have to start somewhere. Starting is probably one of my biggest things I talk about in my podcast. We have to start something somewhere. And it's going to be messy. It's going to be a lot of work. But in the end or the begin, like like end or beginning or middle or whatever you want to call it, it's going to push you along to that place where you're heading towards and you want to be. And that's really, really important. Just just start. Get across that start line. Thank you for saying start. That's just like one of my most most important <laughs> things that I talk about. And I here's, know- the, 
and, and even though I was I was messy in in the beginning, right? I still got clients out of it, and I still helped people, and that's why I haven't even taken down those things that I put up at that point that feel messy to me now because people still get value out of it, right? It's just that I'm able to give more value now in less time than I was at that point, but people still got value out of it. And so if you're waiting to start and you're thinking, okay, um, I can't help somebody, someone is still going to get value out of your messy action. So that's why you have to start. (laughs) And I like using that as an example too, not just for me to know where I came from, but to let other people know that I started from here and this is where I'm at now. And it's kind of, you could follow that storyline. You could follow that hero's journey of this is where I'm at and this is where I'm where I was when I started. Don't be afraid to start something because I did the same thing too. Everybody starts that way. I didn't know you had a podcast. Yeah, it's, it's called the blissful love podcast. I've been on like hiatus for a a little while because I'm also, I I host a few TV shows. So that's been taking up a lot of my time, but I think in 2024, I'm going to bring back some new seasons in my podcast. (laughs) No, it's great. Keep me posted on that. I'd love to hear about that. (laughs) All right. If you could do so thinking back for me and when you were just getting started, did you have any like mentors or anybody that helped you along? I know you talked about the the group coaching and some of the coaching they had for yourself, but do you have anybody that really sticks out in your mind and when you were just getting started? Yeah, so I have both positive and negative mentors mentors in my life. And so this is this is this is the thing that that there is no experience that has to be actually negative unless you allow it to be that way. So when I first started coaching, I actually started as an associate coach working with another coach that I had trained with. And and then I got to a point where I had I had a falling out because she had me doing a lot of work that she was not paying me for and the conversation that I'd had with her was this doesn't work. If you want either you take back this work and I won't do it. And I'm okay with that. Or if you want me to take this on, then, then I need to be compensated for it. And so we ended up having a falling out and she ended up telling me in that moment that I would never make it on my own because she knew the the pain points that I had in my life. And so she tried to bring me back to that. So that I would stay with her. And she said, you're never going to make it on your own. And she thought that I would just, I would just stay in that situation. But she underestimated how much I had changed. And I said, no, that's fine. I'm ready to go my own way. And at that point in my life, I had had doubt because if I could do it on my own, and I'll tell you why I had the doubt, because at that point I was going into relationship coaching and I was not in a relationship yet. So I was thinking, okay, I don't have the credibility to be able to do this. But and so I need to work with somebody who is so that I have I can borrow their credibility. And because of that experience with her, it forced me to step into the next level of myself and say, no, I've invested way too much time training. I've invested way too much money into this. I just have to make it work on my own. And I did. And and it forced me to do that in two weeks. I had <laughs> everything set up and ready to go. Um, again, it was messy. It was <laughs> it wasn't put together. But you know, that experience pushed me to my next level. And then of course, like that led me into the path of finding mentors that were better aligned. And that's that's a lesson that's going to happen. Sometimes you're going to have mentors that they even if they're positive, they're for they're there for part of your journey because they're just at a place where they're helping people through this part of their journey. And I have, because my next level mentor was fantastic and I look upon her very fondly, but it was, she was supposed to be there for part of my journey. She's not going to be the ongoing mentor. And then I have other mentors that, because they keep growing and expanding as well, that they're people that I can keep growing and expanding with because they're always going to be five to 10 steps ahead of me. So they're great people to take on the next level of my journey. (laughs) Yeah, always find that that uh, mentor or coach or anything that's going to take you on to that next level. But yeah, you really all the experiences that we have in our lifetime, we whatever we do with them, whether they're negative, positive, they're always a teaching opportunity. You know what I mean? It's it's negative, but it's not really negative because it's actually teaching you that you could be self confident for yourself, just like what you went through. And yeah. your work is definitely worth something. So when somebody says, I mean. 
it just definitely sent a red flag up to me when you said when she said that you're not going to make it to the next level. I mean, that, that to me, that makes me say, yes, I am. I'm going to show you that I can make it to the next level. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> and that's what I mean. There, it doesn't have to be ne- negative experiences, right? Because you can use those to fuel you. It doesn't always have to be positive experiences because sometimes we just need momentum to get going in our business. And obviously p- positive momentum, like people cheering you on and believing in you is 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 better, but any momentum is better than nothing. And sometimes I think life does throw us those curveballs because they force us to confront our own fears and conquer them. Exactly, exactly. And it sounds like at one point there during your story, you had a little bit of imposter syndrome. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it it continue it, it continues, but the thing is is to keep keep pushing past it. And I think every disaster that I've had has 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 taught me something. I, I had another experience when I first started speaking on stages. My my biggest fear was, okay, what if I forget my speech? Well, this happened to me. So I was I was on this big stage and I, I started my speech and then there was a mic failure. And uh, half the people hadn't been able to hear what I started. So we had to start all over. And when I started all over, I forgot. (laughs) And this was my worst fear (laughs) absolutely come true. And there's a part of me wanted to run off that stage in tears. But I didn't. I took a breath and I continued and I finished. And what I realized in doing that is one that by going through that, I didn't die. It was okay. (laughs) And um, once I got off that stage, I realized that what I had to say impacted the people that it needed to impact and perhaps even had more impact because it made me more relatable as a person because I wasn't this unapproachable, perfect person. And that actually, that situation ended up bringing me clients because They, because people connect to our humanity. So every time we're afraid to mess up, but every time we mess up, that's an opportunity for someone to connect to us. And just being able to stand there and go through that and have that courage, there were people in that audience that whatever they had things that they were afraid to do, that to take those steps and it encouraged them to go forward in courage. Yeah, what a what a story. That's great. I'm I'm sorry that happened to you, but it looks like it turned out really positive in the end. Yeah, I mean, I do not, do not regret that experience. And it's brought me so much more ease every time I get on stage now because I'm like, okay, if it happens again, then it happens again and it's not it's not going to be the end of the world. And it, that's how I approach uh, like every situation in my life because there are going to be other situations where imposter syndrome syndrome creeps in again. And it's okay because I'm like, okay, sometimes It's going through that walk with your fears and like playing out the worst case scenario in your mind. And it's okay. Well, what's the worst that's going to happen? I'm going to be embarrassed. Okay. That's okay. That's not, that's (laughs) not the end of the world, right? It's going to become a learning moment and a teaching moment as well. (laughs) Yeah. And that's great too. And I used to see like you faced your worst fear. So now it's okay. Anything else that comes around, oh, it's not that bad because well, I've already faced my worst one. So yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. And when you're when you're trying to find a, a mentor or a coach or something, always trust your gut. Trust your gut and feeling for this person. And if they start kind of going kind of weird on you, maybe it's time to fire them and find somebody else. Don't be afraid to fire somebody. <laughs> Even though they're Yeah. Yeah, no, I couldn't I couldn't agree more. And I also think it's important to find people that that walk their talk. And that's why I'm not afraid of those moments where I mess up, because that is part of me walking my talk. (laughs) That's right. Okay, thank you so much for that. What a great story. I I love that. Thank you so much. All right. So what I'd like to know here is in your first year of your entrepreneurial venture, what was one of your hardest pitfalls or problems or struggles that you have when you were just getting started? I think it was as you put yourself out there, especially when you're doing it in an online way, you're going to have haters. So I had my struggle was that I would put myself out there and then I would have I'd I'd have positive feedback, but I'd also have some negative feedback, which would cause me to withdraw. And so I didn't show up fully because it was putting myself out there, withdrawing, putting myself out there, withdrawing, putting myself out there, withdrawing. And then I just realized that 
it doesn't, it doesn't serve anybody at all when I keep doing that. And I just need to understand that my message is going to resonate with who it resonates with. It is not going to resonate with everybody. And the people that are happy are not the ones that are going around criticizing other people because they're, because I know this because when I'm in a place that's very happy, I am not being critical of other people. If I see someone who doesn't align with me, I turn the other way, right? I unfollow them. I don't need to engage with them. I don't need to go down a road of negativity because I don't have the time or energy for that. <laughs> yeah, we don't have to follow everybody that follows us. Yeah. And it just kind of gets to a point where we're we're more interested in following and follow. And let's not worry about that. Let's worry about people that align with us. Let's worry about people that are are willing to help us along in our entrepreneurial adventure, people that do align with us. But we're not for everybody. I mean, we're not going to please everybody out, out there in the universe. Not everybody's going to be agreeance with what we have. So we got to kind of keep that in mind that even though they're not in agreeance with us, sometimes they'll say bad things to us. We just got to kind of let the water how's it how do you say that the the water duck off the back of the anyway okay <laughs> we just need to let it go basically we'll play frozen and just let it go all right so <laughs> but you know when it comes to people that do hate on you one thing i've learned and i heard this from pat flynn is hurt people hurt people yeah sometimes people that go out there and say negative things are having negative things that are happening to them and this is their particular way of of kind of releasing that. So let's not let that get the best of us. Yeah. I mean, I, I I absolutely couldn't agree more. And that's why that makes me more passionate in the work that I do, because I realize that the happier people feel within themselves, then they're also, we're creating a better community because they're going to engage differently with the rest of the world. Exactly. Exactly. All right. That's awesome. Thank you so much for that. And good words, good words. All right. So you've been doing this since long. How long have you actually had this, had your entrepreneur adventure? So I started my own business January, 2018. Okay. So from then to now, do you have, this is an interesting point. Do you have a failure that you're very proud of? If, I'm glad I had that failure because it taught me this or something along those lines. What do you think? Well, I mean, I think I talked about my my situation on on stage, right? So that was that was definitely a failure and I'm definitely really really proud of that. And, but I don't know if this is like a this is a failure, but since we already talked about that, I guess what what I'll share is something else. So during the pandemic, so when I first started my business, I also had another job and so I had a full-time job and then I was I was running my business. And probably by the end of 2018, it would have made sense for me to leave my other job except I didn't have that I still didn't have that belief in my business and but it's it, that is scary to, very scary to do when you're an entrepreneur and we need money in this world to survive. And you're thinking, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? What if I have a bad month? And I guess then the pandemic hit and in, in 2020. And when the pandemic hit, I just, I realized life is short. Everything is uncertain anyway. And at that moment, I decided to leave my job and just focus on my business. But at the moment that I decided to do that, most of my clients had stepped away because they were very uncertain about their own finances. And I, so I chose myself in a moment that it made absolutely no sense to choose myself, but I just realized, okay, in all of the uncertainty of everything, why am I clinging on to something that actually isn't certain because nothing is certain. So let me just go all in on myself and believe in myself. And that is actually what catapulted me to the next level, making this decision that actually made no sense, but that I felt called to by my gut and my intuition. And to be honest with you, I think that's a similar story to just about a lot of people that have happened in the, in the world. Like now that everything's shut down, we have to depend on ourselves to figure out what we're going to do to survive. And then once they get started, they realize, hey, I can actually do this because they couldn't go back to work. It's all shut down. Right. So and you'd be surprised how many how many stories start out with. Well, then the pandemic hit. So <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's where a lot of our 
our minds shifted into realizing that we can do things for ourselves and not have to work under that uncertain corporate whatever it is that we're working for that could point at us and fire us in a second. I mean, how how secure really is that when you yeah, have to depend on somebody yeah. else? Yeah, there is no certainty. I mean, there's uncertainty in entrepreneurship too, right? But I decided that if I was going to take a bet, that it was going to be on myself and not somebody else. <laughs> well, yeah. And then who do you have to blame if something goes wrong? Yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and then you learn from it and then move on to the next thing. And I also believe that when you put more skin in the game as an entrepreneur, that is what will take you to the next level, right? There are people that are doing brilliant, amazing things as side hustles, but they might stay side hustles for the rest of their life because they never actually put enough skin in the game to take it to the next level, right? And so sometimes you just have to make that decision uh, and it's not going to make sense to anyone else, but it has to make sense for you, right? Because maybe you have this big idea that hits and if you believe in that idea, it just, and it requires time and investment, then you're going to have to decide to make that bet on yourself. Exactly. Exactly. You just got to, you got to look in the mirror. You got to point at your, at your own self. And this is me. And this is what I'm doing. And this is who I'm going to blame if, if something happens is me and then learn from it and then move on. Yeah. And I mean, also the biggest thing also is I mean, and this applies to to relationships and our relationship with ourself, right? Is that when you trust yourself, you don't need to actually trust anyone else or anything else around you because um, you're not worried about if something doesn't work out because you trust yourself to figure it out. And when I went through the process myself, I thought, okay, well, what's the worst case scenario? If I, if I try this and it doesn't work and then I deplete all my savings, what, what, what's the worst case scenario? Okay. Well, maybe for a while I have to go get a job as a bartender or a server or do something like that just, just to make it through. But I'm willing to do that. If that's what, if that's what it takes, I'm not going to, I'm not going to die. I'm going to be okay. I'm going to figure out a way through. I'm going to figure out a way to make money, even if it's not the ideal situation and, and realize, okay, well, I trust in myself. I trust in my work ethic. I trust in my own ability that to make it through no matter what, then, then it's okay. It makes it easier for me to take that chance. <laughs> That's right. It's funny you said server because I'm actually a server at night. So, but yeah, <laughs> But yeah, exactly, exactly. The worst worst case scenario, you go back and go back to work. Okay, fine. And then we just kind of work it back up from there again. Like you yeah. said, you're not going to die. It's you're going to make it. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> all right. So that's awesome. So now I want to kind of take an opposite approach. That what is one of the most in your vast number of accomplishments? What are the what is a couple of things that you're the most proud of? So I would say one of the things that I'm really proud of is, so I've co-authored two books. So one of the books that I co-authored is a passion project. So it's 10 of us that are all inspirational speakers and we all shared our stories of resilience. So we all met through the speaking world. And in, in this book, we compiled some of our best speeches into chapters and this book, the whole book, not just my chapter, but 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 everything put together is so beautiful. And if you're struggling, I, I mean, I love this book because sometimes we hear one person's story and we can think, oh, it's an anomaly, right? But when you hear 10 stories of vastly different people who've struggled and they've overcome and they found success, that is sometimes the evidence that your brain needs to know this is possible. And these people are so vastly different. It isn't an anomaly. It is just a belief that they had in themselves. And if they can do it, I can do it. And that's what I feel like that book provides to people. So that is something that I'm really proud of. And that book is called Our Yellow Brick Road. Oh, I love that. Our Yellow Brick Road. All right. Is it available like an Amazon, all those good places? Yeah, it's available everywhere the books are sold. <laughs> okay, awesome. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put a link in the show notes for that. We'll see. Because sometimes people need that. That's what people need is that one inspirational thing that that says, okay, I'm going to do it. That one word, that one story could be your story. Yeah. <laughs> or anything. But to this, 
I mean, but that's what I love about that book because it's not just mine. It is 10 stories. And the thing is, I do believe that my story will resonate with people, but I think it's like, it adds that sort of compounding effect when you can hear all of these different stories and realize, okay, triumph and resilience aren't aren't just a one-off thing. It's not just because of me and the particular circumstances that I came from, because all of these people came from different circumstances and and we all triumphed over them. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we're definitely going to link that book into the show notes, Scuba Believers, if you want to check that out. Thank you so much, Navi. That's awesome. Okay. This question, and and this is probably most important because like all of my listeners or most of them are all new entrepreneurs that are just getting started in their entrepreneur adventure. So what advice would you give somebody who is just looking to jump into entrepreneurship? So the biggest piece of advice that I'd give to somebody who is just looking to jump into entrepreneurship is that don't do this for the money because it's it's actually easier to go do other things to just make money. You have to believe in this because there are going to be times that you are going to be working really hard. You're going to be working much harder than you would at any other job that you do. And you have to have the passion and you have to have the belief in it in order to get that work done. Now, that does pay off, right? But you have to be willing to put in that work, right? That's why when people talk about becoming an overnight success, they talk about, oh, it took me all of these years to just become an overnight success, right? Because it's all of that that work that they put in. So you have to be really, really passionate. You have to have a really big why, a really big reason why you're doing something and making money can't be that reason because if it's just making money then just get another job until you figure out what your passion is and if you don't know yet don't don't feel like you just have to pick something that's in front of you instead try to be receptive and try to be open and try to connect with things that you are passionate about so that you can find the thing that really fires you up that you're willing to get behind Exactly. Find something that's in your zone of genius. That's what I always talk about. I have a lot of uh, podcasts that I, I've done where I talk about my zone of genius. And one of the things we do to find our zone of genius is to find the one thing that you really love to do and you're okay doing it for free. Because that's going to be the one thing that is just going to push you along. You're doing it for free because you love doing it so much. So you're not so much worried about the money because you love doing it anyway. So you're going to do it no matter what. And having that why is going to be very, very powerful. And then having that why is going to happen. Go ahead. Oh, oh yes, sir. The beginning stages, the thing is, there is just going to be stuff that you're going to have to do because you're built that that you're not getting paid for because you're building up the structural foundation of your business, right? So you're building up the things that you're selling. You're building up the things that you're doing. And those aren't going to bring you revenue right away. So you have to care enough. You have to be have enough passion, interest in those things that you're willing to do them. Exactly, exactly. So don't be afraid to do that. Whatever it is that you love to do and you're okay doing it for free, then that's what you want to think about doing. And you always make it, you make a good, I I always like making a good analogy that I heard in uh, Atomic Habits when it comes to overnight success. There's really no such thing as overnight success because we all start from somewhere, but it's like an ice cube in a freezer, right? If the ice cube's sitting in there in a freezer at 22 degrees, it's not going to melt. Bump it up a couple degrees, you get to about 29, it's still not going to melt because it's still there. But once you actually get to 31, 32 degrees, it starts to melt just a little bit. And then when you finally bring up that temperature, then it just melts. And we just do the same thing too. We're just getting started. And that, and whatever it is with, that we're doing, that's when we're at the coldest. When that that ice cube's not quite melting yet, and nobody ever sees that ice cube melt until the temperature gets high enough for it to melt. That's when people start seeing the success. So I was like, when we talk about that, I like kind of bringing that up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or like a snowball picking up speed, like rolling down a hill, right? Like it's going to it's gonna get faster and bigger and have more momentum, right? And that's exactly how it goes in business. Like I know that in the beginning, because no one knows who you are, no one knows what you're doing. You have to go and, and seek every opportunity. You have to do at all the, the work in the beginning, but then you'll, you will get to a certain point where 
it, it shifts and things just start to come into alignment, right? Where that that's the place that I'm in now. And now I'm just, I'm in shock because things keep coming to me. I don't have to seek them. People refer me to this. Uh, people have heard about me and, and that's awesome. And, but it, I wouldn't have come to this place if I just stopped in the beginning <laughs> when I had no momentum and I would have thought, okay, well, I'm kind of tired of putting myself out in these situations and I'm not even getting paid. And But, but, I, but I cared about what I was doing. <laughs> I love the I, I love that you brought up the the snow because that's actually one of my favorite analogies that I've been using lately. When you're just getting started, you have a snowflake. You get enough snowflakes together, you can make a snowball, and then you get enough snowballs up together, you either throw a, start throwing them or you make a snowman, right? And that's what we're trying yeah. to reach to get to that snowman. So yeah, thanks for bringing that up. I appreciate that. What I do with all my guests right here towards the end, as we talk about a six month goal for yourself and your business. So do you have any goals for yourself in the next six months? Yeah, I have my solo book coming out and Woo! my goal for that is to hit New York Times bestseller list. So I'm working really hard on accomplishing that for myself. And and I don't know if this is in the next six months, but maybe in the next 12 months at TEDx Talk. <laughs> nice. You keep me posted on that, okay? For sure. And then when you get to that book release, let me know so I can uh, start posting it in there for you. We're going to we're going to help you get along to that bestseller list, okay? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, Nami, this is your time to shine. I'd like you to talk about your business, what you do and how we get a hold of you, okay? Ready, set, go. Yeah. So I think you guys, if you've been listening to this podcast, you already know what I do, but I am here to help people with their relationships, the personal and professional to connect and fall in love with themselves so that they can effortlessly magnetize every single thing in their life that they want. So you can attract those soulmate clients or that soulmate relationship if you desire and how you can get a hold of me is through my website. It's just navyblisscoaching.com or I'm at navybliss on all platforms. If you have any questions, feel free to DM me, feel free to connect with me. I love talking to people if you have any questions about anything, be it domestic violence, be it business, anything. I'm always open to having conversations. So please feel free to reach out. <laughs> All right. What I'd like to do too with Navi, if it's okay with you, is uh, in six months, can I? I'd like to have another interview with you and see if you've uh, reached those goals that we just talked about. Would you be okay with that? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Navi, thank you so much for being on the Undiscovered Entrepreneur. I really appreciate you coming here. All right, school believers, stay tuned for the wrap up. Thank you, everybody. Have a good evening. Bye bye. <laughs> Right, school believers, that was Navi. Wow, what a great story. She has so she has so much amazing things to talk about. And she has just I, I love her personality. She's really happy and she makes a lot of great points about loving yourself and kind of keeping an eye and ear out for people that want to follow you that and not having such bad thoughts about people that that really don't like what you do. I know it sounds a little bit negative, but at the same time, like I said, hurt people, hurt people, and we're not for everybody. So let's always keep that in mind too. I love the fact that she had the the snowball. <laughs> How much I love talking about that analogy, and she brought that up perfectly. So thank you, Debbie, so much for being on the podcast. And we will kind of keep an eye on her. We will have the the book in the show notes that she was co author with. Uh, uh, our yellow brick road. And we, you want to keep an eye on things. I guess she's going to have that, her own book coming out here real soon. So keep an eye on things for pre-orders on that. Uh, if you're interested in, and listening to her own stories. All right. So a little bit more about what I'm doing and what's happening in my life. The business conversation with Pi has been released. Uh, it happened just before this episode, go back and listen to it. And then Listen to it every Sunday. Every Sunday, I'm putting this business conversations with Pi out. I think they're great, but I really want to get your interpretation. I want to see how you feel about it. 
Contact me at uepodcast2021 at gmail.com. You could also look me up on Twitter at djscoob2021. That's probably where I hang out most of the time anyway. But I really want to get your opinion on what you think about this podcast. It means a lot to me to hear about what you think I do. So please, reach out to me. Tell me what you think. Good, bad, doesn't matter. I want to hear about it. Also, just a quick reminder about my Patreon. I do have a Patreon going on right now. I need some support from my school believers out there. I am starting to put in blooper reels. Uh, (laughs) I'm putting one together right now for you. I hope you think it's funny because I sure as heck do. Uh, If you want to get on my Patreon and check that out, please go to tuepodcast.net slash Patreon and sign up for that. It's as little as $3 a month all the way up to if you want some coaching. You can figure out when you sit on there. Also, I am now officially working on merch for my podcast. My daughter started doing some designs for shirts that we had ideas for. We're kind of brainstorming that right now. And I'm really excited to get that out there. So keep an eye on things. Subscribe. Let's keep things going. Things are so going so great right now. I want to keep this train rolling. So please subscribe all that good stuff if you could and i will see you next week with a brand new entrepreneur thank you everybody goodbye (laughs) hello there dj scoob here and i just want to personally say thank you for listening to my program i really hope you learned something tune in in two weeks to listen to another brand new entrepreneur and remember I can, I am, I will, and I'm doing it today. Do you find yourself faltering when speaking in public? You definitely know what you're talking about, but you just can't seem to get over the horrific fear, and imagining people in their underwear is just not working. Whether you're gearing up for a big presentation, or just looking to improve your daily communications, Leslie Friorenzo is your go-to resource for mastering self-promotion, facing your audience fearlessly, and communicating with authority. Don't miss out on your opportunity to elevate your game. Contact Leslie Fiorenzo now or go to tuepodcast.net backslash speak to step into the spotlight with confidence. Your adventure in public speaking mastery starts here and now. Don't wait to get your voice heard. Book your free consultation at tuepodcast.net backslash speak to start your adventure in speaking excellence today.